And so for us in Wondermed, one of the main differentiators from other providers is the theory of change. Ultimately, how we see psychedelic medicine. We believe that ketamine is not the solution. Ketamine is not the substance that heals. It is up to the individual, up to empowering through educational resources, people to believe that they can actually have a change. And so what the Wondermed platform as a whole is going to start striving into is providing the best curated tools for people to build their own experience. It's a matter of providing guidance, providing educational resources, but ultimately allowing the individual to craft that journey. Hey folks, this week, Jose Munoz Eichart, co-founder of WonderMed, is on the show. We're talking about telemedicine ketamine, WonderMed's approach to telemedicine ketamine. We get into some metaphysical speculation all in all, a hell of a conversation. I met Jose at an event in June, no, July, at the Petite Vermitage for our, it was uh, the launch of our nonprofit, the Microdosing Collective. Jose showed up. They've joined as founding organization of the Microdosing Collective. By the way, if any of you want to become founding members, reach out to me, shoot me a note on Instagram. If you want to be part of this, you, you want to be actively involved in ensuring that microdosing gets legalized, join us. We're building an incredible group of people there as well really connected. And so I'm like, come on the podcast. We did an event together in Miami during the Wonderland conference. And it was, it was pretty dope all in all. So it was a, a pleasure to do this. And I think you'll really enjoy this episode. Hey, listeners, welcome back to the Psychedelic Podcast. Today, we have Jose Eichart from Wonder Sciences, who is joining us for the podcast. Jose is the co-founder and managing director And um, they're really doing some phenomenal work when it comes to, at this point in time, ketamine and ketamine-assisted psychotherapy and research around ketamine-assisted psychotherapy. And uh, Jose's approach uh, with a background in astrophysics is quite unique uh, compared to, you know, a lot of these sort of over-medicalized approach when it comes to ketamine. So Jose is going to go deep into that relationship. So we'll talk a little bit about mathematics as it relates even to ketamine, which would be an interesting, I think, topic and concept. But Jose, welcome. Welcome to the podcast. It's good to have you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. I think anybody has ever introduced me that way. So that's an exciting way to put the level of the conversation. Well, mathematics, it's like, it it brings us down to first principles, right? It brings us down to sort of the building blocks, even though they are relatively abstract. And I think something that ketamine does is when we, when we work with ketamine, especially in a, in a very deep experience, we sort of, we get back to the roots and the foundations of who we really are. And so there's probably some interesting sort of parallels and overlaps between those two. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, not to get into it right now, but the, the truth about mathematics is that in my opinion, they're limited in their explanation of reality. They're to some extent mistaken. Um, They fall prey of their own fundamentals, which is to explain nature in a very fixated manner. And that's the same relationship that we have with psychedelics and the understanding of reality or their own perception of mental health of individuals. There's not a one solution, solution fits all. And so in the same way that I've loved to study the limitations of mathematical models in cosmological events or quantum physical movements, I, I am incredibly passionate to keep working with patients in understanding how their mental health state, their mental health as a whole, is not something that fits everybody. It's quite unique and personalized. And that's kind of the work that us at Wondermed are trying to do to empower people. And I want to spend definitely some, some significant time talking about Wonder Sciences and Wondermed. You know, we've had a few other podcasts that we've done with some of the other telemedicine ketamine companies in the space. So I definitely want to sort of dial in the differentiation and and really what's the unique proposition of Wonder Sciences and Wonder Med. But before we dive into that, it's always helpful just to have a little bit of context around you, right? Like how, how did you come into the space? You know, why did you study astrophysics? Um, Why did you move to Venice Beach when you're from, you know, Europe and Southern Spain? Just, just tell us a little bit about your origins and, and up until the point that, that you, uh, you, you chose to enter and, and commit to the, the psychedelic space like you are. Absolutely. Well, I mean, let's just start it from the origin. Like you say, um, I'm ori- ori- originally from Spain. I was born in Madrid, the capital, but lived most of my life in the south, in, in Sevilla. Um, always been fascinated since I remember being at a young age, questioning questions of our own relig- religion. I was raised Catholic, and for me, just the structural definitions of what reality is, 
I've always have a hard time conceptualizing them as they are in terms in terms of trying to find a specific meaning instead of a holistic one. And I think that for me, that was the, the pavement of my own education and academic career. I was very fascinated by economics. I think that they were a form of mathematics that try to explain the way in which society behaves with, with one another. I personally see, for example, aspects such as money as uh, tools for society to behave within one another, to try to measure the step of behavior. And so for me, my background has always been in international business and try to quantify ways in which we can evaluate the added value that people plus people have, that usually it's not value within society. So that aspect for me started to take in shape when I was in New York. I was studying um, international economics and astrophysics, and I got to realize of the abundance of people. I think that a lot of, for a lot of times, you know, somebody being from Sevilla, traveled the world, but really lived in New York and tried to observe the masses of people doing very similar things, very similar movements, very similar um, decisions, and all of them just added one on top of each other. And I tried to really captivate what is it that we could do at large with society, with technology, to try to elevate the positive impact that we have for itself, for humans, uh, in a way that it hasn't been done before. And so for that, for me, started to take its shape with uh, cryptocurrencies. I believe this was 2015, 16, and I started developing socioeconomic models um, around cryptocurrency systems that would crumble the fundamentals of economics that we understand them today, such as uh, reserve ratios in banks or the ordinance of political regulation that comes from the federal government into um, the economy itself. And that, for me, again, took shape around positive impact. The idea was, how could we generate more positive impact? And uh, at first, that came in the form of desalination plants. So I'm developing a project in Kenya that those desalination plants are forming the water from the ocean into potable water. And the notion is to bring value from society itself in business models that we already see today and try to divert it into technology. And as I was doing that work, that's when I got connected to um, the other co-founder of Wonder Sciences, Ryan Magnussen. And he told me of this idea that he had to try to elevate the consciousness of the planet, try to basically generate this massive positive impact on a gener generational uh, capacity. And that he wanted to do that through the power of psychedelics. And so myself, after having uh, just finished my astrophysics thesis, just put together one plus one and it really equated three for me. It was the notion of innovation, technology, it being a focus around understanding reality or the science behind mental health and psychedelics. And at the same time, having the, per the unique purpose of making positive impact um, at large. Um, as we all know, for those that are familiar with the psychedelic space right now, it's an incredibly gray area very complicated from a compliance and regulatory standpoint. And so it also embedded the ability of us to create an infrastructure system in the back end of a company that could truly allow for accessibility, for affordability, and at the same time, it being compliant. And that's kind of how we've been putting the pieces together to build Wondermed. So you moved to New York, you study, what, international economics and astro astrophysics. Yep. You then find yourself in the cryptocurrency kind of world tie together for me this relationship between cryptocurrency and the desalination project you were you were working on in in kenya did one lead to the other was there an attempt to bring sort of decentralized currency into that desalination project or is that just more sort of a point or an example around projects for good that led you into wonderman um Kind of neither, in the sense that one didn't lead to the other and vice versa. They both came together to the notion of accumulating um, economic value from society, things that were happening today, try to decentralize that value. And cryptocurrencies kind of provided the tool from a theoretical and practical level of trying to divert those economic values to people. The aspect of the desalination plan just came from the notion of let's look for massive disruptive technologies that could truly be scalable in the solution of very large problems. And the desalination plan was the first technology that I got to familiarize with uh, out of a company in Europe. And then those two, I just put them together at once. Um, and kind of now with the aspect of psychedelic medicine, it felt very similar. It was putting together resources and an economic model that could fit a financially sustainable uh, company like Wondermed to truly be able to heal the masses. And at the same time, focusing in the large innovation that people were not even aware of. And they still are to some extent, not aware of the psychedelic medicine is. So that's kind of how they both melded together into one. So let's let's get into wonder sciences. Um, 
and talk a little bit about Wonder Sciences and Wonder Med. My understanding of it, and correct me if I'm wrong, is Wonder Sciences is is more of an umbrella and Wonder Med is particular to ketamine-assisted psychotherapy. So just talk us, bring us a little bit deeper into the, the, the sort of vision behind Wonder Sciences and how Wonder Med as, as sort of a, a, an applicability of ketamine-assisted psychotherapy fits within uh, this larger vision that you have. Great. That's a fantastic question because I feel a lot of people have the same question at seeing both Wonder Sciences and Wonder Med. Wonder Sciences, like you mentioned, is the parent company. It's basically the umbrella of this um, ecosystem that we have built to truly elevate the value of psychedelics in society. WonderMed, and I feel that for the purposes of the conversation, it would be good to keep the conversation around WonderMed moving forward for the listeners to kind of comprehend where all these values are going to come in. Uh, WonderMed is the brand, is the technology, is the platform that actually provides the impact of psychedelic medicine for the purposes of healing mental health. In other words, Wonder Sciences has the vision of elevating the consciousness of the planet, and WonderMed comes in truly by enacting the mission which is to revolutionize the mental health industry by being able to provide accessible through affordable treatments, provide reliable through evidence-based forms of treatments, and most importantly, bring customization to the healthcare and treatment sphere. And that only comes through personalization of their own experiences. And so in a nutshell, WonderMed basically has the mission to empower the inner healer. It is a conglomeration of affordable tools that people can access for them to be able to receive in this instance, like you were saying, assisted ketamine um, therapy. And accessibility is key, right? I think I think it's it's a it's a central point to a lot of the healing conversations that are happening. And of course, one of the biggest upsides of of ketamine is it's generic, right? And so the the medicine itself, the substance itself, is is actually quite inexpensive. It's not. You know, it's not going to be like, you know, insulin medication or, you know, a lot of these other medications that are, you know, covered by health insurance. But if you don't have health insurance, it might cost, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. So I'd, I'd love to hear you talk a little bit more about um, what does accessibility look like within the Wonder Med model? And, and why do you think it's so important that accessibility is, is, is present and available for, for uh, those who need to heal? Great. I mean, a loaded question. Let's see. Um, let's just start with the last one, which is accessibility itself. I think accessibility is the basis of impact. If there is no access, doesn't matter how well the technology is built, doesn't matter how good the innovation is, it's not going to touch anybody. So the form of accessibility in its prime essence, whether it's large accessibility aspects or small ones, is to touch people. So I think everybody will understand the importance of accessibility at large. In the spectrum of accessibility, for us, WonderMed, that means that if we want to elevate the consciousness of the planet, we need to try to heal as many people as possible, as good as possible. And that's where the aspect of affordability comes into play. We're the first ones in understanding that mental health is a holistic form of healing. You won't be able to treat your mental health just with a psychedelic substance, because in essence, psychedelics do not heal mental health. It is the perception or perspective change that you go that you get through a psychedelic experience that then you apply through integration uh, resources to actually make behavioral changes. In the day-to-day life of individuals, that behavioral change comes at a cost. It comes at the opportunity of you being able to maybe start exercise more or to travel or to learn a new language or maybe to apply a change in careers. So ultimately, in the society that we live in, everything related to behavioral changes in a large scale always have to be correlated with the opportunity of somebody being able to make that change. And for us, the aspect of taking away purchasing power from patients that might not be equated to the value that somebody uh, in the mental health space can provide is the basis of our company. And so we really focus on affordability to be the basis of outside of insurance coverage to also allow the masses to be able to afford it. And that's kind of the fight that it's by no means uh, conquered and that we will continue to strive to make uh, treatments even more accessible moving forward. So let's talk a little bit more about those details. You know, someone who's listening to this podcast, you know, they, they maybe they've, they've heard of a few different companies in the space that are, that are doing telemedicine, ketamine assisted psychotherapy. I won't name them all on this, this podcast, but there are, there are several now that, yep. that are doing this. 
what is it that sets WonderMed apart or differentiates WonderMed from some of the other people who are who are offering? How how kind of what's the approach? What's the perspective? What's the technology? Um, I'd love for you to just talk a little bit about that that lens. Absolutely. Um, this is a great conversation, and you know, Paul, better than anybody, that this is something that um, we don't just speak to the public. It's a conversation that we always try to solve, even within the industry itself the aspect of providers or doctors. It is the notion that uh, there is not one answer. I've spoken with some of the smartest people that I've ever met in my life in the last couple of years. We're talking about neuroscientists. We're talking about psychiatrists. And the most common answer is we don't know. And as long as we start from the point of view that it doesn't matter that we don't know, and we actually agree upon the idea that we're still in this exploratory phase of wanting to understand how to best improve, how to best treat people, I think that we will have kind of the, the, the most efficient form of, of healing treatments. And so for us in WonderMed, one of the main differentiators from other providers is the theory of change. Ultimately, how we see psychedelic medicine. We believe that ketamine is not the solution. Ketamine is not the substance that heals. It is up to the individual, up to empowering through educational resources, uh, people to believe that they can actually have a change. If we achieve somebody's belief that they truly can have a transformative experience and change, psychedelics, and in this case, ketamine, brings the perfect opportunity for that perspective to actually be changed as a catalyst. But ultimately, there needs to be a realm of resources that WonderMed believes to provide through technology for people to be able to create the right intention setting, the right setting around the experience itself, and ultimately, the tools that would allow them to start engraving some of those insights that they might gather from these psychedelic experiences in their day-to-day life, whether that's journaling or breathwork, whether that's meditation. And so what the WonderMed platform as a whole is going to start striving into is providing the best curated tools for people to build their own experience. It's a matter of providing guidance, providing educational resources, but ultimately allowing the individual to craft that journey. And is that with the support of, let's say, kind of talk a little bit about the role of a coach, a guide, a therapist, you know, there are some programs out there where you get paired with, you know, a clinical therapist or even a psychiatrist, right? Uh, There are other programs where it might just be, you know, um, a coach who has some years of experience and knows the ins and outs of, of the psychedelic landscape. And still, there are other programs where you know there's a coach there if you need it, but it's not necessarily mandatory. Um, so I'd love just to hear sort of what are these different options uh, within the WonderMed um, approach. If someone who wants to come in, they may need support of some sort, um, or if someone comes in, they're like, "Hey, I really, you know, the the technology available is perfect. I just really want to work with the medicine itself." Uh, just talk a little bit about that that matrix of options uh, as it relates to, to WonderMed. Great. Well, to start off, let's say that the metrics of options, in our opinion, is never going to be finished. It is the idea that we want to continue expanding that and curating it even further. Uh, and so when somebody says, hey, this is perfect, which thankfully for us, the statistics that we have upon customers providing feedback, it's like, I think it was 97% of them suggest that they've had a massively positive impact effect within their life with the current resources that we provide. Yet, it being 97 doesn't mean that we're going to stop providing more. And so to explain a little bit where we are today and also where we're planning on going, when a patient comes to WonderMed, they have the opportunity to speak to a support team. That support team is going to be available for them either through a phone call or through text or email at any given point. It is the ability for them, if they have any questions around the program itself, to be able to seek help. You mentioned something really important, which is, hey, I need something else. I feel that I need more. And that's where our team basically provides the ability of refer to other forms of resources. We have our own in-network therapy um, that basically we refer patients to therapists that we believe are trained enough within the aspect of, for example, ketamine-assisted psychotherapy for them to be able to select which therapist do they believe that works best for them. Ultimately, that's just the aspect of therapy. In the aspect of breathwork, for example, we have provided um, a multitude of protocols, including the breathwork app, which now, right now um, um, it's the number one app as of the last um, rating that I had um, for personal growth aspects in the in the in the Android store, and we provide it completely for free for a premium subscription. It is the model that we, again, in the aspect of 
socioeconomic value distribution. We believe that people can have access to these things at a much more affordable cost than if they were to go to these solutions on their own. And that's what we want our patients to feel, that they have this cohort of resources. We provide protocols, our own music journeys, but also provide a list of different music journeys that can be accessible through Spotify or Apple Music for their own experiences. And so ultimately for us uh, right now, it deals with you meeting with a clinician where you can actually get the diagnosis, being able to understand really what medicine they're going to be receiving, in this, in this case, ketamine, understanding the potential risks, understanding the potential benefits, and most importantly, how to treat the medicine. The biggest change that we see in mental health, and this is and the overarching umbrella of psychedelics, is that we've been seeing mental health as a chemical imbalance in the brain. Therefore, you need to be dependent upon something else to start regulating yourself. In that sense, you have SSRIs or benzodiazepines coming in as chemical um, intrusions, I would call it, that creates a form of effect in your brain, but ultimately derive a dependency. In the aspect of how we see psychedelics coming into the mental health space and kind of why WonderMed creates a storyline that is unique to our patients is that psychedelics are an exploratory tool. They basically base their efficacy on the neuroplasticity theory, the notion that us as humans have the ability through our brain to create a meaning in life, to create emotion and feelings. And it is upon ourselves to have the same ability to change, to adapt, to morph. I think everybody listening would understand that when you're a little kid, you know nothing. You don't even know a language. And yet you start absorbing and learning and building this meaning of reality for which right now we collaborate as humans. I push the notion that Steve Jobs pushed, that Albert Einstein pushed, which is that we can continuously push the boundaries of our imagination. That the boundaries from which we see reality to be now doesn't have to be the boundaries from which we actually live in. And so the notion of psychedelics bringing just this perspective to people of, huh, I haven't thought it this way. Or I haven't think of this problem that generates anxiety in my life from this angle is the perfect illusion. A perfect example that I saw from a comedian, Paul, um, was if you've ever traveled to a different country and you've been yourself in a situation where uh, somebody's trying to insult you and they go in a completely different language and they just start shouting at you, but you have no sense of what they actually mean. You see this person just shouting their voices out to the individual. You are no hurt at all. Your feelings are practically intact, yet you're receiving the level of aggression, you're receiving the voices, you're receiving the ideas but you don't comprehend them. And that goes to speak about the aspect of meaning. If you actually receive somebody or an idea or a thought that you understand, aka in your language, you still have the ability to take the meaning and modify it, to take the meaning and adapt to it. And sometimes it's hard for us to do that. It's by no means easy, but that's what psychedelic medicine provides, is the catalyst for you to be able to adapt in this uh, metaphysical side. And the metaphysical perspective is important, right? Because one element that you're talking about with the biological approach to mental health is, you know, there, there's sort of a, an assumption inherent in that model that we are machines. And so if, if then, and this comes from the industrial revolution and sort of a, 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 a I mean, we could even track it back to Descartes potentially of a metaphysical approach mm-hmm. of physicalism or reductionism or materialism uh, and what people often learn through having psychedelic experiences is this sense that um, there's way more beyond, uh, there's way more to reality than what uh, we can see. And that physical reality uh, is actually um, not always what it seems and that the truest reality is actually in the mind. So this is when we get into panpsychism or idealism. Uh, And that capacity then to see how malleable reality is allows for a new story to enter our consciousness, which is, oh, if reality is this malleable, then I'm not stuck in the way that I am, but actually there's an incredible capacity to shift and to change. And so one question that I want to root in uh, root in this for is like, I'm curious how your own psychedelic work or your own psychedelic experiences have changed you. How, how have they been impactful? Kind of what happened as a before and after? I'm, I'm kind of curious of, of that lens for you. Uh, For me, it was a confirmation. For a lot of people, it's a realization. Um, And for me, thankfully, it was a confirmation in the sense that um, from a young age, and this is thanks to my mother, I've been able to think of life um, 
in a very beautiful way, I like to call it, which is trying to understand the real power that we have to truly be what we want. And that doesn't come in terms of achievement, comes in terms of feelings and that the happiness comes from within. And so for me, kind of to dive into that question that you answered, when I was studying astrophysics, before I had ever done any form of psychedelic experience, I had psychedelic experiences that I can now identify as such by me just studying the lunar uh, eclipse or looking at the moon for two hours and trying to understand mathematical models and how the moon actually moves itself around the earth or gravitational forces. For me, it was a way of understanding that there's so much more. There's so much more that we can answer. There's so many questions that we can truly not grasp and feeling comfortable within that, driving that thought starting to develop theories, I start to understand theories. That's why for me, I see a little bit of a, a lot of correlation between physics and psychedelics, because when we think of reality as the objective reality, I think of Newton. It's everything that we see today. The fact that things drop in front of you. But when you get into very large scales and you look at, say, galaxies colliding with one another, our mathematical observation doesn't match the actual data that comes back to us. And so when we see these differences, us as humans, what do we do? It's not a mistake on our part. There is something else. And that's actually where the term dark matter was coined. It was the lack of being able to mathematically predict the visual observation of galaxies colliding with one another. And so for us, or for myself included, when I had my first psychedelic experience, and then I started doing my work in understanding how you mentioned my life could be malleable, how I could actually... Uh, be comfortable within my mind and adapt these concepts and ideas on a day-to-day -day basis, it felt like a confirmation. It felt like what I have been experiencing through my studies is actually real. And why is it real? Because I was able to experiment with it. I was able to observe it. And we both know this. A lot of people have this misconception that you take psychedelic medicine and now out of the blue, your whole life or reality is melted. You have changed everything. Now you don't know who you are. Or if you say are a father of four, now you don't want to be a parent anymore. Or there you have these very drastic potential changes in your life. And it is truly not that. I think that psychedelics within their experiences, although they might be intense, I see them as very subtle signals. A very great example for this is to point or to look at somewhere far out of you, say an object I have in front of my uh, in front of me here, a library. And if I put a finger between myself and the library, for me, the library becomes the objective reality, becomes what is, it remains still for everybody. And the finger becomes all the problems, all the ideas, all the thoughts, all the emotions that I have. If I'm able to close the left eye and leave the, the or close the left eye and leave the right one open and then change it, I get to realize that the objective reality the uh, bookshelf doesn't move. Yet my finger, which is my thoughts, emotions, my life, my problems, my anxiety, my depression, doesn't move either. But I was able to have an observable reality of that objective object, very different with just a slight change. It was almost like I just gained a whole angle of perspective. And that's what psychedelic medicine for me has been on my personal work and how I really take these integration resources uh, not for granted in understanding that they're incredibly important to then take this angle and then act upon it. One, well, this is great because what I'm tracking here as well is like Newtonian physics, you know, Isaac Newton and sort of the, the, the many theoretical perspectives he provided really informed the industrial revolution. Uh, it informed uh, growth and po progress It informed you know, a lot of the world that we live in today. And it was, I mean, what, it was 350, 400 years ago that, 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 that this happened. It was only in the last, let's say, 100 years that Einstein came up with, with his theory of relativity. And what I'm tracking with, with precisely what you're saying is, you know, it, it feels as if society still hasn't adapted to the truth of Einstein's breakthrough. In other words, we still seem to live in a Newtonian kind of culture uh, of mm -hmm. perspective, right? Physicalist, materialist, reductionist, and maybe the opportunity that that psychedelics offer, um, when used with intention and responsibility, is a deeper understanding of really what Einstein was talking about. Um, because when we have psychedelic experiences, time itself 
becomes very subjective, right? Time yeah. itself can sometimes warp or expand. And so that felt subjective experience of how time is changing maybe will allow for, you know, those who have these experiences with psychedelics to see that, oh, reality is much more malleable than we previously thought. And because it's more malleable, all of these crises that we're facing, whether it's the mental health crisis, the climate crisis, the, you know, financial crisis, the whatever, oh, we actually have the tools and the capacity to adapt and grow and change. In other words, we don't need to be scared or intimidated, but we simply need to just go, we can address this. We can handle this. It's no problem. Feel empowered. Absolutely. We can feel empowered, right? We feel like we're agents of change in a way. Yes, exactly. And I would say, let's take it a step further. Please, please take it a step further. um, uh, Beyond um, Einstein himself. I think that these theories as well, are still from what I called basing upon the curse of the observer. Us as an individual observing reality, therefore, ex- therefore explaining. We're very limited as a species, and it's really our only method, whether it's through observation or auditory or even touch and feel. But the reality is that, like you mentioned, that time itself is something that you can truly feel morphing. When you think of these type of topics, I say, okay, if everything that we need to explain has to come from an observational truth, let's look at the limitations of the human. Were you aware that on the spectrum of light, humans can only observe 0.0005% of the whole spectrum? It's such a small amount that everything that we see or believe to be true is very limited. There is so much out there, practically everything out there, if you compare it to what we can actually observe, that we are not taking into account. And so when we as humans try to understand or a patient tries to understand, why is it that I'm feeling this way? How is it that I can change? What is the true power that I have? It stems from the notion of the limiting perspective of the observer. If you take that patient and provide them with the resources of education and the experience of a psychedelic journey, or in this case, low-dose ketamine, even from the comfort of their home, you're providing them the opportunity to realize that there is more. And that more becomes just empowerment, becomes the notion that although I see that it's raining, I don't need to feel bad about it. I can actually look at the bright side. A lot of times we hear, just think positively. But what does think positively mean? Once you actually understand that your brain is malleable and that having positive thoughts enact positive actions and positive actions enact positive beliefs, You're ultimately generating a new methodology of behaving that you didn't have before. It's not being fake. It's just being a new you. It's a constant evolvement of your capacity to live. And that's where I think that um, we need to take it a step further than this mathematical understanding and even look at quantum physics and think, look, we can observe it, but we know it's there. There's a beautiful... String theory. uh, A string theory, for example, or even like perspective theory. If you think of... um, I love to do this exercise on my mind. It's a form of meditation where I become a blood clot or a blood cell within my blood system, my my circulatory system. And I'm flowing from my heart through my arteries and flowing all the way through my body and going back and forth. I know exactly where I need to go. I'm able to understand when something in my body gets hit, how to send signals, how to maybe accumulate around a certain area. There is an inherent intellectual um, relationship between your body and your mind. Yet... I, as a blood cell, have no absolute clue who Jose is. No absolute clue what's out there. The reality of the outer words understanding that I, as Jose, understands to be, including my blood cell. And so when we think of that, and then you think of the planet Earth, and you think of the solar system, and you think of the Milky Way, and you think of outer bodies that we're able to observe but we don't really understand, what's stopping us from being part of something greater? What's stopping us from being part of something smaller? And so this form of ethereal thinking, which a lot of the times people think that it means nothing matters, and it's quite the opposite. Everything that you see, everything that you feel matters, but that you have the power to create that meaning. You have that ability. And that's the ultimate message that, um, that we here at WonderMed push to our patients and provide uh, in these experiences. It's quite the metaphysical message jose i mean that is a uh the, the 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 thing that's coming up for me is aldous huxley who 
I'm sure you know of, and, and many of our listeners have heard me talk about before. He had a metaphor where he talked about how you know consciousness has a re- reducing valve, right? So in other words, you know, in order to navigate our everyday reality, to you know, pay our bills, to take care of our home, to wash the dishes, to do you know various mundane tasks, uh, we naturally block out a lot of what we actually could perceive, you know, what he would call mm-hmm. maybe the ten percent rule, and that when we take a psychedelic, and you know, Huxley, when Huxley was a thing, ketamine wasn't really around, but he's talking about LSD and mescaline in particular. When we take a psychedelic, all of a sudden that 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 valve opens up significantly, and so these these normal things that we shut out, we all of a sudden have the opportunity to really take in and go, oh, this is also part of our reality. And I think to your point. And 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 the 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 important part here then is discernment because not everything everything matters, but not everything is necessarily helpful for the path that someone is on. And so exactly. when that that consciousness is expanded, then it's really up to the individual. And if they're working with a coach, a guide, a therapist, someone who who has sort of navigated this landscape before, what what sort of messages or what intel that is coming through is relevant and helpful for the intention that someone is coming into the experience with. And I think that's where intention uh, for whether it's ketamine or any psychedelic is helpful to navigate a lot of that new information or new uh, you know, stuff that's coming through. Because if all of a sudden, like you said, you know, we can see 0.0005% or whatever of, of light, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, most people would say we live in a two dimensional or three dimensional reality, and there's actually 11 dimensions. So all of a sudden, if we start mm-hmm. to open up to these other aspects of, of existence and reality, it can often be disorienting. It can often be confusing. It can often be like, oh my gosh, how, what do I do with all this information? So that intention then allows us to say centered and say, oh, okay, this is the through line. Pick this out, pick that out. And that way, when we, when we come back into conscious reality, the way that we approach things is with more nuance, right? The way that we approach things is with more understanding. The way that we approach things is maybe with more compassion, uh, both for ourselves and for things outside of us. Um, and I love, I love how all of this can be rooted in mathematics and astrophysics. So thank you for bringing this yeah. perspective because it's a, it's a very unique one. Absolutely. And I think uh, our, our patients kind of need, need to keep that in mind, everybody, when they're in this, in this journey of their own, it's the aspect of intention. It's almost like a flag that you, po- you, that you put out there for you to always know why is it that you're looking into this? Why is it that I'm discovering this new form of thinking? Because it actually allowed me to to really value the little things, to really value doing the, the, the laundry, to really value doing the dishes. Um, kind of focusing on that 10% again, it's the ability that, you know, there's a different angle of love. And love is usually the most common denominator amongst everybody in doing these type of experiences. We know it well, and we always talk about it, how a lot of the times it is rooted in understanding that we're all one that um, it's much more important to focus in telling I love you to the people that you love than saying I hate you to the people that you hate. That it is the aspect that um, you start just feeling certain things that you actually like, that you actually feel passionate about. And to your point before of intention, it's a matter of writing them down. It's a matter of understanding how is it that I can now take actionable steps towards making these changes that I personally feel I need. And this personally is why personalization of treatments is so important. Anxiety and depression are incredibly abstract concepts. It is different for everybody. Nobody has the same type of anxiety. Nobody has the same anxiety produced to themselves. And yet us, as say the caregivers, we need to try to accumulate in a conglomerate certain buckets to try to perfectionate how we can heal. But ultimately it's upon the individual to truly personalize how they take these insights, to truly personalize how to take action in their life. And that comes just from understanding that they again, have the power to do so. Um, and something I would like to say, because I feel that we can take this into the astrophysical realm, mathematical, metaphysical, and it can get very abstract. Ultimately, a lot of people, uh, especially people that are religious or people that have been raised upon a religion, when you think of the term God or what God is, it to some extent answers most of the topics that we're talking about right now. And yet people don't feel completely overwhelmed of the notion of God. They get to understand it, they get to believe in it, and they get to get to their conscious reality, 
and live their life. This is very similar. It is the notion that you can have the perception of it. You can have the understanding of these concepts that we're talking about, but ultimately root yourself into who you are and act upon the life that you have because it truly is the only one that we have, at least in my point of view. I think that we live once as I am, as Jose, and so I need to try to make this journey of my own as special as possible and to, in my own purpose, make people feel as good as possible um, when I can. So, yeah. One thing I want to talk about is ketitations. Uh I think, you know, something that Wondermat has done a few times now is, is, is my sense is hosted these group ketitations. Uh, I think you did one at Summit Series. Um, there may be a couple others as well that you have done. And I'd love just to hear hear you talk a little bit about those why host ketitations what's the intention of doing that with example summit series uh, why do you think it's critical that this is not only done you know because a lot of the telemedicine ketamine groups it's you know I've, I've done this myself you get ketamine sent to your home you do it at home you maybe have a trip sitter there you're by yourself it's it's certainly healing from a personal perspective um but it also feels limited, especially, you know, I've done ayahuasca in ceremony, I've done psilocybin in ceremony. So I'd love for you to just talk a little bit about the role of ketitations in groups and why you think that's important uh, as part of sort of contextualizing and normalizing ketamine use. Well, I think it's a statement. It's a statement of people with one another. Um, I personally, I am a firm believer in, in the use of ketamine at home for the angles of affordability, accessibility, and ultimately upon hyper-efficacy in some instances. When we compare the data results that we receive from, say, our patients that are at home compared to traditional forms of medication, right now we're working with the University of UCLA to publish our, uh, our data. Um, you will be able to, to get to see that, wow, there's really more here to, to say than what we currently perceive. Truly, people can actually heal. I can have as an individual the opportunity to maybe try this new alternative form of medicine, adapt it to my own space and my own self, and have an impactful transformation. And the same way that a paper from UCLA provides this value, the notion of ketatations provides that in individual experiences to people to feel that I am not alone, that there is others that actually are taking this heroic movement of feeling that they have the power to make a change and enacting it. Everybody that um, has a ketamine experience, in my opinion, has to see a clinician, has to get prescribed. In my opinion, you have to look for the actual knowledge from experts that can guide you into the proper utilization of it so that you don't fall prey of potential side effects of addiction or that you don't misspread or malu- misuse the actual medicine. And so in bringing this um, this experience uh, to the public from time to time, we allow of our patients to have the opportunity to have an experience with others. It ultimately is uh, a different sensation, but similarly how music changes, for example. Um, a lot of our patients like to change the music journeys in their experiences. So if I go through an experience that has a specific type of music, and then I go into a second one that has a very different type of experience, even the visual effect that I might have or the interpretation of the experience upon my intention is very different. And it kind of allows people to understand that there is more than what meets the eye. And this aspect of the accreditations is just merely another example of that experiential form of experience that also takes a lot of the times the fear away from people. There has been a, a very large skepticism built upon society that um, psychedelics as a whole are deteriorating for humanity, that they're deteriorating for people. And ultimately, like with everything else that I say is apply your research, look into the data, understand what's really out there coming from the experts that you truly believe in or that you truly trust. And um, there is no better trustee than your own self. And so this experience for a lot of people is a matter of, okay, let me see if I can actually do this within the notion of having others around me. And that has actually been a wonderful experience for a lot of people. Well, and the beautiful part about ketitations, I've done I've done a few myself uh, with smaller groups, maybe four, five, six, seven, eight people overall, is it's shorter in length, right? So it's it's just ninety minutes, maybe two hours at the longest. Um, it allows to it allows for a really deep experience. You can weave in music, you can weave in breath. Um, 
and then it's simply, you know, like what we usually did after the meditations is we'd have a little bit of a sharing circle. We would share some food, you know, maybe some some tea, um, and it doesn't it, it doesn't energetically take as much as like you know a six hour psilocybin ceremony or a six hour ayahuasca ceremony. So I think there's also an upside, and it's great because obviously ketamine is legal. You know, ketamine can be prescribed, and 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 it's you from correct me if i'm wrong but from what i understand you don't necessarily need a clinical indication to be prescribed ketamine in other words you don't need to be clinically depressed by a psychiatrist to be prescribed ketamine you have to have symptoms of anxiety or symptoms of depression tell, tell us a little actually tell us a little bit about that cuz you probably know more about that than i do what how, how is that navigated you know I can speak from the angle of Wonderbit itself, uh, okay. from what we do okay. as a company. Everybody that comes to the company and tries to obtain or tries to see whether or not ketamine uh, therapy or treatment is something beneficial for them, ultimately has to get it prescribed for a diagnosis. It is true that right now the landscape upon this gray area of ketamine being an off-label use drug allows for doctors or physicians to prescribe ketamine for multiple diagnoses, practically for anything, if they would like to. Um, ultimately, for us, we feel that we have the outermost responsibility to make sure that in these early stages of an industry and in the risk that we're taking by facilitating these forms of new alternative medicines to people, that we only treat individuals that can actually um, get diagnosed for a mental health disorder. Reason being, most of the data, most of the past literature supporting the use of an off-label medication like ketamine is supportive of certain diagnoses. And so for us, um, our primary focus is anxiety and depression. Ultimately, as a company, we actually um, disqualify 25% of patients that come to the platform to try to receive treatment. And 25 is quite a large number. It's one in every four patients. Reason is because, again, we're not here to make money. We're here to create a financially sustainable um, platform that can truly heal more people. And at the same time, we feel that in the method of uh, your at-home journey, there are certain risk profiles that it would have to get uh, provided with different forms of treatments, whether it's in an in-person clinic, whether it's with the support of another physician that we don't feel we have enough resources for them right now. And that's why we feel very sure of the patients that we actually let go into the experiences with WonderMed, that this is indeed a potential um, right fit for them. And something that I will say around the, the, the aspect of, um, of the at home and kind of going back as to kind of what is it that a patient could receive with WonderMed as a resource package is the opportunity of what you mentioned of your own experiences, which is being able to do a breathwork exercise, being able to set that setting in, that mindset, do a small meditation exercise, get into the experience of the actual ketamine um, treatment, which will last around one hour to one hour and a half, that ultimately provides you this perspective, and then post-experience, be able to start working again upon a certain breathwork exercise that might allow you to come back to, you, to what you would consider your conscious reality, or, for example, journaling, and this be able to be done in a very easy setting. And I think that the copulation to what you said before of having an intention, therefore experiencing and therefore acting upon it, is really the basis of what an at-home treatment can provide to people that a, maybe an in-person clinic has a harder time to do. Main reason, because it is your setting. I can adapt to what I need to prepare myself into. Um, I myself consider myself a very busy person. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that would look at my life and say, you have nothing on my life. I have two jobs or I have kids and I'm trying to cope into focusing time for myself and my mental health. The at-home component really allows people to personalize that experience for them and be able to say, you know, I'm going to craft this time that I know I have. I'm going to really focus into my mental health experience and then have something that truly has a large impact in my life that doesn't require me to go to an in-person facility or to have to go to a location that then I cannot come back driving on my own, given that after ketamine, we suggest people do not take um, or work with any heavy machinery. Operate machinery. Heavy machinery. You know, yeah. or, or drive cars. That's the technical yeah, word. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, last question before we sort of wrap up and, and have a call to action. You know, there's, there's, you know, MDMA is going to be approved relatively soon for PTSD. Psilocybin is going to be approved relatively soon for uh, major depressive disorder and treatment resistant depression, assuming all goes well. 
does Wonder Med have an intention of sort of expanding into those medicines and those molecules, or are you really intending to stay focused on ketamine for the foreseeable future? No, uh, that's a great question. We actually intend to be a support for the psychedelic community at large. Uh, something that everybody, whether you're a provider, a clinician, a researcher, or an actual patient, I hope that you feel that WonderMed is not here to try to elevate WonderMed, but actually try to elevate the consciousness of our society. And that comes in the hand of supporting the research community, supporting, like you mentioned, the future forms of substances that are going to be able to heal people. That's going to come in different uh, shapes and forms. Uh, one of it is going to be our technological platform in the support of these experiences in an in-clinic setting and patients being able to utilize WonderMed as their trusty or their trusted source of protocols. It ultimately, uh, for us, ketamine is just the beginning. Um, I think the psychedelic industry is in a beautiful path right now. A lot of effort, a lot of great minds, more than I've ever met before, uh, working in truly try to move this angle. Um, I think it's a fight that a lot of people are getting together to do. And I, in the aspect of multiple psychedelics, one of them is just going to be another pivotal factor that either supports clinicians in the prescription of this medicine, or it provides support for therapists and uh, patients that are working after these experiences. We're going to be an ally. We pretend to be an ally as long as we can. And so, so yes, we definitely will be touching the world and realm of other psychedelics. Beautiful. Jose Icart, the astrophysicist master. It was fun to just jam on th those those connections today. We never we never have really had an opportunity to to ping those parallels, and of course to hear about to hear about WonderMed, to hear about uh, what you're bringing to the world, your intention behind it. Um, you know, the efficacy of ketamine, the the at home approach, the ketitations. This has been uh, a really beautiful beautiful conversation today. If folks who are listening, you know, they're interested, they're curious, they want to learn more about WonderMed, they want to learn more about uh, either how, how they can get involved as a clinician to support WonderMed or maybe even uh, to, to, to get involved as a client or a patient um, to go through the treatment, next steps, what, what, what are some good sort of places to, to check out? Well, I think it would be great for people that are interested in uh, going through a potential ketamine treatment that they feel is would be optimal for them or for somebody they know to go and check out wondermed.com. So again, it would be wondermed.com. And for them to be able to uh, go through the process of eligibility, understanding whether or not they're eligible for this treatment, um, we believe to be the most um, comprehensive package for people to access affordable treatments. And so for $399, they will be able to have a whole treatment that lasts upon around a, a month for most people. And they will be able to customize it uh, in talking to the clinician about their needs, in understanding how is it uh, that ketamine could help them. And so I really suggest people to just go to WonderMed and learn more, understand that, uh, for example, we have a full refund policy upon meeting with a clinician. So if they're just interested in learning more and seeing where truly or not, this is something that could be beneficial for them, um, I highly suggest them going to WonderMed and now utilizing the opportunity of, uh, of having this transformative experience for them. So wondermed.com will also include a link in the show notes if people are driving and listening to this or just, you know, can't pull it up. Um, and I believe I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm on the website now, 20% off for the first month, uh, which is phenomenal as a, as a, as an initial discount. So, um, you know, Jose, it's, it's, it, we've, we've known each other now for what going on maybe four or five, six months. Uh, we threw a great yeah. event together in Miami, which I don't know about you, but that was hella fun that was good uh yeah, was it, good. it was a good event it was a good party and it's so great what you're doing with wonder med what you and ryan have built you know the entire team behind it um it's really needed and necessary the focus on accessibility the focus on at home ketamine treatment the focus on empowering the inner healer to really come forth through this medicine so i just appreciate all your work and uh, appreciate you joining us on on the psychedelic podcast today Absolutely. Thank you so much for inviting me. I have a feeling that our relationship has taken a step forward, which is always good in this type of uh, conversations. Uh, and yeah, just if I could send another message to people. Um, if you can and believe, you will. So get to it. Belief is everything. Thank you, Jose. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to stay up to date on the third wave of psychedelics, subscribe to this channel and visit the thethirdwave.co, where you'll find plenty of free resources on intentional and responsible psychedelic use.